Hello, hello, my name's Tom, and we're back talking about F1 Fantasy. We've just had Spa, we're going straight into Zanfor, then we're going straight into Monza, and it's just like, bomb, 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 race, race, race. Like, the next couple of months are going to be insane. So we're going to get straight straight into Zanfor, because we've only got a few days until <coughs> yet another deadline. Um, very briefly, just want to say, everyone is in my, te in my team, in my league at the moment. We are currently top, top of the Belgium league, like, for large teams, so very pleased with that. Only just pipped the pit wall, guys, uh, by 0 0.3 points on average, so... Very well done to everyone in my league. We've just about got on top of the top top of the world, so to speak. Uh, so that's fantastic. Uh, as for my actual teams, I ended up going with the template team for Spa. I call it template just because I don't know if it, how template it actually is because the actual ownership, for example, Red Bull is not actually that high compared to Ferrari. So, but it's template for me personally just because I think this is the safest kind of build to go for. And if you don't have the budget for this, you can just downgrade like Alonso or Stroll to whoever you can afford sort of thing and just try and keep that core of Ferrari and Red Bull. Um, so yeah, I, I decided in the end not to go for Hamilton. I just felt, I felt basically it was too many eggs in the Hamilton basket and if something went wrong which it turned out it obviously did go very wrong, then my team would just be kind of decimated for that week, and I just didn't want to take that risk. I thought, I felt like it was just a bit of an unnecessary risk, and yeah, I was very much rewarded this week, and I'm up to the top, just inside the top 15k globally, so yeah, we're almost in the hallowed, hallowed ground of the top 10k. Um, don't know why, don't know why top 10k is like the number everyone wants to get to, it's just, I guess that kind of transfers over from FPL, and everyone's just like, yeah, top 10k, top 10k, but anyway, uh, doing well, um, great week in Spa for me, and I'm gonna try and carry that on into Zanvort, so we're gonna have a look at what I'm gonna be considering for my team, so I'll load that up in just a sec, we'll have a very brief look at the spreadsheet as well, just so, just as kind of a quick summary, um, a quick look back at, you know, how the season's gone so far, because this will just take a couple of minutes, just to kind of collect our thoughts a little bit because we've had two thirds of the season roughly at the moment and so every all the numbers in here at the moment are very re much representative you know at the beginning of the season everything was fluctuating we had if you remember Magnussen was at like two and a half points per million sort of thing averaging like insane insane amounts and you see he's very much brought back down to earth down at 1.1 now and yeah the has drivers are not particularly excited at the moment we'll see how they do in Zanfor um, and yeah, just in general, like the things that stand out to me, Verstappen, absolutely head and shoulders. Like, it's clear when you watch the actual races, Verstappen's just in another league this this season. And in terms of fantasy as well, he's also in another league. He's, he's averaging 40 points a race, averaging 40 points a race. So if you don't have some sort of coverage for Verstappen, whether that be Red Bull as a constructor or Verstappen as a driver, then I don't know what the rest of your team is looking like. It must be pretty solid, but... We, we, I think you're missing out on points, basically. So I think um, maybe going forward, having at least some sort of coverage for Verstappen is going to be important. I'm even tempted, although it might not happen this week because there's a lot of people on streaks this week and the streaks might tweak how I want to build my team. But going forward, I'm, I am seriously considering going for the double up on Verstappen, having Verstappen as a driver and the Red Bull as constructor. Um, like Red Bull just so strong. They're so strong, so consistent. Max Verstappen's so good. He saw, you know, he's starting back, what was it, 14th up to P1. Like, Perez started at the front of the grid, and he was still, like, what, 18 seconds or whatever it was at the end of the race behind Verstappen. So having some sort of coverage for Verstappen is really important, in my opinion. I'm sure there's, I'm sure there are builds that you can have which don't involve Verstappen. You can still score well, but why try and overcomplicate things? Get the highest scoring guy in your team. And similarly, you can see the constructors here. Um, I really like this column, the points per race, because it's just very clear. You know, the points per million per, per race are kind of interesting to see, the, you know, the value. But the actual points where the main bulk of, you know, the main focus of where you, your, your attention should be in fantasy. Red Bull are leading leading the way quite clearly here, 61 points average. They absolutely dominated in Spa. So if you didn't have Red Bull as a constructor going into Spa, you might be a little bit left left in the dirt a little bit. Another thing that caught my eye of Verstappen is he's only on minus two points for positions lost and gained. Compared to the likes of the Ferrari guys, Leclerc is bottom of the grid at minus 58. Minus 58 points. You compare it to Lance Stroll, who's the top of the grid, at 102. That's like a, over 150 points just in like DNFs and finishing races. Like that, that shows exactly how Leclerc's form has just gone plummeting down and how he might not be... You know, At the beginning of the season, he was turbo driver, no question. And now we're seeing him have, um, no longer turbo driver option, maybe not even in our teams at the moment. Ferrari... Ferrari strategy has just become a bit of a meme. Um, the clerks just not quite performing how we want him to, and we can see very clearly here in the numbers that it, that is a big, big difference between him and Verstappen, and indeed uh, the likes of the Mercedes, who are very reliable. But yeah, this, this 
This is why I picked Lance Stroll as my budget option in, in Spa, because of these points gained from, from positions gained. If we hop over to Spa, we can actually see uh, we, uh, Stroll um, still managed to get six points from positions gained yet again. Because of all the madness of the grid penalties, he actually started further ahead than where he qualified. He dropped a couple of places back, but still managed to claim those six valuable points uh, as a budget option. So, yeah, very good, very good from Lance Stroll. That's enough talking about the data, I think, for the time being. We'll move on to the actual team selection, and it's a bit of a headache. A bit of a headache this weekend, because let's get rid of this advert. I hate these little adverts that pop up. It's very annoying. Um, yeah, so this is my team at the moment. Um, I'm very much against taking minus 10, so in this, yeah, I just don't see a reason for taking minus 10s when, you know, I've already got a great team if I just left it exactly how it is. But there are, like I say, lots of streaks at the moment. Let's have a quick look who's on a streak. We just... Get rid of Paris for two seconds so we can have a look. We've got Verstappen, who I've just talked about as being phenomenal. He's on a quality streak, so it's very tempting to have Max Verstappen. It's also very tempting to actually... I'm very tempted to mega drive Max Verstappen this weekend. I don't know how many of you guys are also consider it. I did I did use the mega driver, one of my mega drivers on Verstappen um, in Zandvoort last year, and that was when he was on no streaks. I just had a very good feeling. I, you know, normally you want to mega drive your like the best drivers when they're on a streak or when it's a sprint race. But last year, I just thought, Verstappen, home race, he did well in practice. It's like, yep, yeah, we're putting the Mega Driver on. I was so convinced he was just going to dominate, and he did. And I ended up getting, like, what, 50, 50-odd 50 points or whatever it was. Um, no streaks, but a safe Mega Driver. And, you know, we saw what happened with Hamilton last week. Some people, I definitely think, would have Mega Drived him being on that double streak. And it was a disaster. Um, I didn't even put him in my team in the end because I thought it was a little bit, just, you know, a little bit of a risk that wasn't wasn't necessary. But I think Max Verstappen is definitely the safest bet as a mega driver this season, and he's on a quality streak now. We could, you know, could wait further on until he hits a race streak. We could wait until Brazil where there's a sprint race. But there is definitely a temptation to mega drive this weekend. That home race, Red Bull are currently very dominant. I do think Ferrari will be stronger this weekend, and that's going to influence my team selection as well. Uh, I think the track suits them a lot better than Spa did. But Red Bull just seemed to suit every track. Like, yes, Spa, like, everything came together, and Spa was, like, perfect for the Red Bull, but I, I still think they're going to be very strong around Sanford. So, yeah, tempting. Tempting with the Mega Driver and Verstappen. I'd be interested to know what you're thinking about that. Uh, we've also got George Russell on this double streak. So again, you know, Mr. Consistent, he's just consistently hitting 30 points, roughly. Or well, I think, yeah, his average from the spreadsheet is 29 points across the entire season. When you take into account that random DNF in Silverstone, um, he's probably averaging, you know, if you ignore that, he's averaging above 30 points per race. So we can definitely expect, I think, I think the Mercedes should be well suited to this track, like a lot better than, than Spa. Spa, you know, the Mercedes just is a bit of a... A bit of a tank when it comes to... When I say tank, I mean like a slow-moving vehicle, not like something strong. <laughs> a bit of a tank when it comes to a straight line. And Zandvoort is much more windy and so those higher speed corners. And yeah, just a quick word on Zandvoort, actually. I think it's probably my, possibly my favourite track. I absolutely love Zandvoort. And it's not great for overtaking. So qualifying will be very key in terms of our fantasy selection, I think, this week. But just Zandvoort as a track, I just love it. It's so windy and fast and high downforce. Just... Yeah, it's it's everything I'd like to see as an F1 fan myself. I'm really glad it's back on the calendar from last year, and I hope it stays there for a long time. Um, but anyway, that's just me waffling on. Um, <laughs> yeah, so George Russell on that double streak. We've also got, we moved down, Carlos Sainz on a qualifying streak. And we've also got both both the Alpine boys, Fernando and Esteban, both on a race streak. So they're both very tempting as well. No one else down there. But we've also got the constructors to consider. And we've got Ferrari uh, on this double streak. Um, you know, Red Bull, who are my favourite constructor at the moment, um, are not on any streak at all. Um, but it is very tempting with the Ferrari. And we see the ownership. The ownership of Ferrari has dropped down to 45%. Um, funnily enough, Red Bull don't seem to have actually gone up. So I don't know who, you know, people are dropping Ferrari and jumping onto, I don't know, McLaren or something. Don't know what's going on there. But either way, Ferrari is still highly owned. And almost half the people in the game own Ferrari. And if you don't own Ferrari yourself this weekend and they do well, you could definitely see a potential rank drop just because, yeah, you know, Ferrari on this double streak, it really is going to compound. If Ferrari do well and you don't own them, they're on the double streak, quite heavily owned. It could compound your rank a little bit. So it is tempting to kind of damage limitation, potentially. Especially if you are got a high rank already. I kind of want to defend it a little bit by maybe covering them with the double Ferrari. So it's kind of like, oh, do I want to do that? But at the same time, Ferrari still kind of worry me, just in general. Like we've seen again race after race, something something stupid's happening with the strategy or whatever. Um, so yeah, um, 
but they are in one of the builds I'm looking at because because on that double streak and the high ownership. Um, if there was no streaks involved at all, I wouldn't touch them. I'd just have Red Bull as constructor for the rest of the season. But the streaks, streaks are tempting. Um, they're not the you know the be all and end all. We saw what happened. You know Hamilton and Norris are both on streaks. Um, Hamilton didn't hit his race streak. Norris didn't hit his race streak. So, you know they're very tempting because they got that lovely orange flame. But doesn't mean they're going to get the the extra points. They actually have to you know finish in the top ten etc. So. You know, the, the streaks are definitely important um, to try and hit if you can, but I wouldn't go all out just trying to maximise streaks in the team. Um, but anyway, let's have a look at one of the, the teams I'm looking at. Well, should we have a look at the, let's have a look at the Max Verstappen build to start with. And we're going to go with the, we're going to have to cut the clerk out. Um, we have to go all the way down to a has driver just because Verstappen's expensive. And I'm thinking of a team like this, potentially. It gets a couple of the streaks in. You know, Alonso's still on good form, gets a race streak. Carlos Sainz is also uh, on a quality streak, for Verstappen on the quality streak. And this would be a temptation if I was going to go with the Mega Driver. Then we could see Verstappen as the Mega Driver. And then probably Turbo Driver Carlos Sainz. And this team is, well, you know, it's fine. It doesn't super excite me, but it does give me that double Max Verstappen coverage. Home race, quality streak, probably going to win, <laughs> let's face it. Like... You know, and a part of F1 fantasy really is maximizing those big, heavy, high scoring assets and the budget options like, yeah, yeah, so I have to have Magnussen, it's not ideal, but I'm so like sure that Verstappen's just gonna do well again. Like uh, at some point it does it does concern me, you know. At some point surely something's gonna happen and Verstappen's gonna have a bad race, but at the moment we can't predict that. Um, you know, variance happens and we can't always predict what's gonna happen. So let's just go with the most likely outcome. The most likely outcome is Verstappen is going to probably qualify first, probably going to win the race, you know, like, is he, is he a mega driver, mega driver option? And if he is, then this is definitely a build that I would consider. Um, another build that I'm looking at actually is if I didn't have, you know, if I wanted to cover off Ferrari on that double streak, that does give me some extra funds here, and I can then drop the likes of Magnussen and get another Alpine driver who's also on a race streak. Now, this team looks really tasty, to be honest. Um... Because, yeah, because of all the streaks. We've then got race streak, race streak, quality streak, quality streak, double streak. And then Stroll. <laughs> but Stroll, you know, Stroll is Stroll. He's fine. He'll plug along. Um, again, you know, just finish the race. Anyone DNFs, he'll just be like, thanks for those two points, guys. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, this team looks really, really, you know, really good, to be honest. Um, it does worry me slightly with the double or sort of, yeah, the double up on kind of Ferrari. Um, no Leclerc, but no Leclerc this weekend is kind of fine, I think, because Carlos Sainz is A, cheaper, and B, on the quality streak. Um, and just in general, just on slightly better form, I would say, at the moment. Um, so yeah, this team is definitely tempting. Again, we could use this as a, a Mega Driver option if you want to go Mega Driver, Verstappen, and Turbo Driver signs that there might be somebody out there but like, why don't you just turbo drive one of the alpine drivers because on the race streak but i still think signs can outscore them particularly because he's on the quality streak and don't forget the quality streak is a lot easier to hit than the race streak which we saw again i'll use the example of hamilton quite easily hit the the, the quality streak uh the rate the race so much can happen you're gonna have collisions you're gonna have reliability but in quality you know you just basically if your car's fast enough to get the top 10 as long as you don't completely mess up somehow or some, something crazy happens, you're going to get that quality streak quite easily. So a team like this, you know, turbo driver on color signs, that's an easy five points. Double up on the turbo driver, 10 points, just for, for basically turning up. <laughs> so yeah, a team like this is definitely very tempting. It gets that Ferrari double streak in there, which, like I said, Ferrari should be strong around this track. They should be strong. Um, whether they're going to mess up the strategy or what, I don't know. They, they, you know. Maybe they'll have a clean weekend and this will be a fantastic team. Um, yes, definitely a temptation. Um, there is another build that I'm looking at. If we just reset all this, undo that, go back to uh, my original team. Uh, there is obviously also the possibility of just leaving it as it is. Just stick the template there, leave it there. It's template for a reason. It scores well. It scored well in Spa. It probably scored well in Zanvo. And I could very well see myself going with a team like this as well. But it's, it's, it's this temptation of the streaks that just keeps luring me in, to be honest. And George Russell is definitely an option there. And let me just see what build I've got for George. So we'd have to cut out. Um, Perez and also I'm going to cut out the clerk again uh, just you know happily chopping out one of the best drivers in there and bringing in again another streak so we could see a team like this it means I don't have to drop down to Ferrari even though on that double streak it means I get the best constructor minus a streak so I keep Red Bull and a little bit of Max Verstappen coverage this enables me to get the George Russell double streak build as well as the double Alpine on the streak blah 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 so yeah there is definitely a temptation to go with this doesn't quite maximise Max Verstappen, <clears throat> which I strongly believe is 
potentially potentially optional or optimal. Um, but yeah, this is definitely a temptation. I think Russell's consistent. Mercedes should be a lot stronger than what they did in Spa. They can't get much worse than you know 1.8 seconds off in quali. Um, <clears throat> I do think that 1.8 seconds is definitely magnified by the fact that Spa is a very long track, and you're going to get larger differentials. Zandvoort is a lot shorter. <clears throat> probably looking at, I don't know, what, about one minute, just over a minute, like a minute 10 or something for a lap compared to almost two minutes for a lap in Spa. So, you know, the differential should be a lot a lot closer together. Um, the track should sit them a bit more, fewer straights. So, yeah, Russell could be a good shout. He's a good shout just in general. He keeps getting 30 points. If he's on that double streak, it means he's probably going to hopefully score around the 45-point mark. And, you know, he might do really well. And, you know, if he podiums, he could be pushing the 50 points. So, yeah, a team like this is definitely very tempting as well. There's so much going on. It's going to be hard to choose. It's going to be very hard to choose um, after the practice sessions. So the practice sessions are going to be very important, very useful, I'm sure. But yeah, there's like, well, I've got three or four builds here that I can pick from comfortably. And it's going to be tricky to, to pick from them. Yeah, so like I said, lots of teams to, uh, to pick from. If you're on a bit more of a budget, <clears throat> if you're, you know, 103, 104 million, maybe you don't quite have the budget that I'm looking at in this, t in this team. All I'd suggest is pick your favorite team from what I've gone through, or you know, you don't literally have to pick whatever I'm picking. You, these are, these are just my ideas. You can pick your own team. You don't have to copy me. Um, but yeah, I'd, you know, if you're happy with one of the teams that I've gone through, and you don't have the budget to actually hit that team, just downgrade someone. You know, it's not the end of the world downgrading an Alonso or downgrading a Stroll. Um, you know, or even a signs down to like an Alpine driver if you really have to. You know, that's not even a bad chat. If you don't have the budget, you can just drop a uh, color signs down to an Alpine. Uh, driver and then yeah whatever like the budget everyone gets so caught up in the budget but the re the reality is it only gets you to upgrade like one slot in your team and that upgrade doesn't get you from and uh, like one of the not so great drivers into the the best driver the best driver is like Verstappen or maybe you're looking at Perez because he's uh, part of the Red Bull team but the budget really doesn't do much more than getting you from like Haz to an Alpine or maybe Alpine up to a uh, Ferrari driver it's not much difference than that. You can't really change like two or three slots based on your budget unless you're Hackerman and you've got like 115 million in the bank. <laughs> then maybe you can go from, for example, um, um, George Russell up from like a, a Leclerc this weekend. But uh, yeah, um, that's that's it for the budget. Like honestly, just pick pick, look at the look at the teams I've gone through, have your own ideas, implement that, and maybe just downgrade <coughs> downgrade someone, downgrade one slot, and job done. Um, yeah, so that's that. And one last thing I want to talk about. Obviously, we had the live stream uh, on Saturday, which was, in my opinion, pretty successful. It was good fun for me. I enjoyed it. It was really nice to chat to some of you guys. The chat itself was a bit chaotic. Couldn't keep up with it, to be honest. Um, but yeah, um, I've got a poll up at the moment on my community page. If you want to go vote on what you want, because I'm not available uh, Saturday for the deadline stream again, because I'm actually away. Uh, this weekend but friday evening i can do a deadline and uh, not a deadline i can do a live stream if you want me to or i can do a video so on my uh, put a poll up do you want a video do you want a live stream i'm happy to do either uh, whatever pleases the masses <laughs> i think at the moment when i last checked it was like 60 percent favoring of the video so you know if you want a live stream get voting uh, otherwise if you want the video i'm more than happy to just do a video as usual uh I'll leave it up to you whichever has the majority i'll just do so yeah if um go vote on that if you'd like to and thanks very much as always for watching. I'll see you Friday, whether it's live or as a video, we'll we'll see. So yeah, um, thanks very much and good luck for, you know, picking your teams this, this week. Thanks very much and bye-bye.